This is Selma Schimmel for the Group Room in Chicago, where we are at the 2012 Multidisciplinary Symposium in Thoracic Oncology, which is brought to you by ASTRO, IASLC, ASCO, and the University of Chicago. We're joined by Dr. Ramesh Rengen, Chief of Thoracic Service and Assistant Professor in the Department of Radiation Oncology at the Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. Hello, Dr. Rengen. Hello, Selma. Welcome. Thank you. You're presenting research at this uh, meeting, and I love that you're a radiation oncologist who is also a researcher. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your work. Part of what we are really here to talk about in Chicago during this meeting is how lung cancer has moved from being a kind of a single disease entity, uh, or you know perhaps two disease entities, small cell lung cancer and non-small cell lung cancer, into a large family of illnesses that each demand their own specific type of treatment. And that has, those principles have been applied to great success in the management of advanced lung cancer. We've had similar advances in radiation oncology, starting to tailor our therapies uh, based upon the stage of the disease and also better integrate radiation treatment based upon our understanding of the biology disease, of the disease. And I think the coming decade is going to really show and, and, and lead to results in personalized therapy from a radiation oncologist standpoint, from a radiation treatment standpoint, that really exploit our understanding of the biology of the disease for the betterment of our patients. How do medical oncologists and radiation oncologists work together on behalf of clinical research. Lung cancer, as I was saying, is really a team sport. <laughs> it is something that requires uh, a multi-pronged approach if we are to cure the disease, if we are to improve outcomes. And that means a very tight partnership between medical oncology, radiation oncology, as well as surgical oncologists. <laughs> and um, we're understanding more and more that no one treatment on its own is effective against all of the disease and we need to address all of the disease if we're to really improve outcomes and the most significant advances in the management of lung cancer that have that have been shown in recent years have all come from combined modality approaches so there is no clinical research no effective clinical research that can be performed without partnerships between radiation oncology and medical oncology tell me a bit about the current focus of your research. Part of what I'm going to discuss tomorrow is actually how can we best take the lessons that we've learned in advanced disease and start to maybe apply them in a meaningful way to patients with earlier stage disease. And, and it's an open question and it's something that I think that story is going to be written in the coming decade, and I'm very excited to, to find out where this is going to go. My area of research is really to try to find out how best we can exploit tumor biology to improve the efficacy of radiation treatment. So radiation treatment, while it's a very powerful tool for sterilization of disease, one of the things that we need to be mindful of when we're taking care of a lung cancer patient What's unique about lung cancer is that it's an extremely prevalent cancer that is embedded within a vital organ. So unlike prostate cancer, unlike breast cancer, the lung is a vital organ. So that demands our attention. So any treatment that we want to design to treat the lung tumor, we also have to be extremely mindful of the damage that we're causing to the surrounding vital tissue. And the surrounding vital tissue is exquisitely sensitive to radiation. So whereas the lung tumor is relatively resistant to radiation, mm -hmm. the surrounding lung is very sensitive to radiation. To make matters even worse, many of our patients, independent of the lung cancer, they have lungs that aren't functioning so well because of the ravages of COPD or emphysema. Baseline, what we have when we're faced with a lung cancer patient is a patient who can ill afford to lose any lung function, who now, because of their illness, has to have a therapy that will cause some damage to the surrounding lung tissue. So how do we handle this paradox? Well, one way is if we can better exploit our understanding of tumor biology, then we can potentially sensitize that lung tumor so that 
the effect of a single course of radiation treatment, even rather than being one-fold, can be three-fold or four-fold as far as the tumor is concerned, mm -hmm. whereas the surrounding lung tissue is relatively spared. And there are a couple of ways to do that. One, through technology, better shaping our beam such that it really hones in on the tumor and protects and protects the surrounding tissue. And there's some ways we can do that through image guidance and advancements there, as well as through using novel uh, alternative approaches to radiation, such as proton beam radiotherapy. But beyond that, we can also exploit, and the group at Penn has worked very hard on this, unlocking the mystery of how a lung cancer tumor cell survives an attack from radiation. Why do some tumor cells, even after being hit by a strong dose of radiation, why are they able to repair themselves? And we've actually identified many of these pathways, and we've developed methods to knock out these repair mechanisms that tumors can employ to repair the damage from radiation. And we've actually initiated trials and we've completed actually some of them through phase one and now through phase two. We just recently completed a trial using actually a novel agent, um, nelfinavir, which is actually a drug that's used to treat HIV. But it turns out that it has the side effect of knocking out one of these repair pathways that lung cancer tumors use to repair the damage from radiation. So by giving a drug that was originally intended for a completely different purpose altogether, we are able to sensitize tumor cells so that the radiation treatment that we deliver and the chemotherapy is more effective. So there's more bang for your buck, if you will. The idea is so that with this combined treatment of nelfinavir plus chemotherapy and radiation, we can hopefully get more bang for your buck from the chemotherapy and radiation. So we're using the same doses of chemotherapy and radiation, but we want that dose to go further. We want that treatment to go further. Because what we've realized over the last decade is that just giving more of the same treatment has its limits. and it has very strong, tight limits when it comes to improving outcome in lung cancer. If you just keep doing more and more of the same, what ends up happening is although it is an attractive notion that if we give more treatment, we should kill more cancer cells, there is a toxicity curve that we always have to be mindful of, again, because of the vital organ that we're treating. And, and ultimately, we get to a point where we're harming patients more than helping them. And so the idea here is to make the treatments that we're giving go further. Your um, passion is palpable. And on behalf of all lung cancer patients, I want to thank you because your work isn't influencing only patients at the University of Pennsylvania. Your work is having a profound impact and ripple effect on the entire field and for patients everywhere. I want to thank you for, that was very generous. I want to thank you for inviting me here to talk a little bit about what I love. Dr. Ramesh Rengan, Chief of Thoracic Service and Assistant Professor of the Department of Radiation Oncology at the Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. Thank you again. Thank you very much.